Good morning, afternoon, and evening. I am student P008583528, and today we will be delving into detail about the concept of military musicking. The reason for this will be to provide relevance to the major component by giving a little more detail that the introduction does not provide. This presentation will aim to describe what musicking is, the connection it has to the British Army, the, re the relevance uh, to the major component, and what this hopes to achieve. So, what is musicking exactly? Well, as referenced in the introduction, through the work of Christopher Small, we get a glimpse that musicking is the act of participating in a musical activity such as performing, listening, writing or studying that aims to divulge some kind of meaning from the music we play. But this only explains in part what the practice entails. Communica uh, continuing from his work, Small emphasises that musicking is about social communication with one another, delivering messages in the form of emotions such as hope, fear, happiness and excitement to the audience as well as to the performer. This is what gives music the meaning to be noticed and respected by many. Although this doesn't just deliver messages in the form of emotion, it can also convey messages by inciting protest, violence and political displeasure. The meaning of musicking is entirely open to interpretation, but the fundamental of this practice is essentially the art of performing and listening. In this sense, everyone is capable of musicking as long as they are dependent on each other in conveying their opinions and emotions. He explains further that musicking is entirely practical to human engagement, telling us that musicking is something that we do rather than we record as a set of work. This includes studying and listening to musical components. Small challenges us to think outside the box of our own Western culture to truly understand the musicking concept. It is reminded that we share a system that is critiqued and respected at the same time in its duality of mankind, finding reason for its existence. In my interpretation of musicking, Small hopes to build a better and more humane world that is complemented by action through musical properties in the definition of musicking. Another interpretation describes that musicking does not offer a proper standard to its definition, meaning that no clear judgment can be made of the practice as it is mostly seen as a conceptual tool for several interpretations. This becomes rather problematic for learning as we cannot pinpoint any select meaning. However, this becomes increasingly useful for practical uses in society for delivering social and emotional messages. And it is through this concept that Everyone is capable of musicking as it functions as a universal language for delivering these messages to people who understand them. Lerazer, in her interpretation, supports this idea through social means and her philosophy that musicking is found within a socio-cultural field in the way that it presents itself to us. In a quote that resonates, Lereza has said, quote, Music is neither a practice abstracted from the social, nor is the social something other than the actual practices. Quote. From my own perspective, this seems to back the ideas of Christopher Small in reinforcing the idea that musicking has no social norm, that it translates to whatever people deem from its meaning. Whether this meaning translates
to commercial aspects concerning pop, rock, or metal, whatever it is, the personal meaning will be different from the person to person, and pinpointing the social norm of musicking will always be difficult on paper. This description has been looked into through the work of Christopher Small in his books, Musicking and Music Society and Education, with support from further literature from Albi Ordino in the text What's With The K, as well as Joanne Loreza in her source Musicking Embodiment and Participatory. An honourable mention includes Valerie Peters and others in their text, The Impact of Musicking on Emotion Regulation. This description has been done to validate the introduction in the dissertation by providing more context to the definition of musicking. The primary themes for discussion are noted down on the right hand side of this presentation. Themes you can see here, such as performing, listening, communicating, studying, social messages, emotional messages, interpreting meaning, and divulging meaning, are all themes of musicking. So, how does this connect to the British Army? How can we connect musicking to an organisation that values order when the concept of musicking tends or seems to be chaotic? Well, we can see that in Hammond's source, the embodiment of musicking has been a part of the army for a very long time. Even though it has never been fully acknowledged, the fact remains that the practices of musicking have been prominent during wars, ceremonial duties, and propaganda machines to influence civilians and soldiers alike. For example, regimental bands have contributed to musicking in this capacity to communicate and deliver the army's message. This can also support the inclusion factor of musicking, relying on listeners of that message to go out and participate in action to the music that the army conveys. This was mainly seen on the battlefield when soldiers acted on musical cues that would instruct them to move a certain way or carry out an order. It motivated soldiers into battle while being loud enough to communicate over the chaos. However, music has not always been a violent means to communicate, as presented by Bronson and his studies. He suggested that musicking that sorry that marching soldiers performed better when music was played to keep time and rhythm. This had a profound impact on soldiers as they moved as one to a drum beat that replicated their movements. <clears throat> now if we go back to the original definition of musicking, this connects to the aspects of military life and to the themes that it represents. In detail, regimental bands played to whatever their audience felt. If a group of soldiers marched by themselves, the band would commonly play music suited to those soldiers, focusing on the rhythm and the pace of the march so that they don't fall out of time. However, on the other hand of this, if a regimental band played in front of a civilian audience, then they would focus on delivering something with a bit more emotional value that mirrors the audience. It presents orderly fashion while sticking to the fundamentals of musicking. In the army, there is still a listener and a performer to divulge meaning from the music played and who both actively participate in music activity. Now, it doesn't sound as chaotic as was originally described. This is because the army has somehow unconsciously mastered the art of musicking 
conveying messages through music to soldiers to act upon their meanings. And this has continued throughout the British Army's history during, uh, during and before the 19th century up to the world wars and into the modern era. The musicing value in the British Army has not changed to a large degree, however, it has evolved throughout time. This is explained more thoroughly in the literature review that explains in more detail of the motivating effects of music while providing a therapeutic tendency for relaxing and releasing stress and anxiety for soldiers. This is the relevance to the major component of my dissertation, to find these connections between musicking and therapeutic practice to help support the mental well-being of veterans and military personnel. <clears throat> the aim of this will be to seek out a method to help and support further research into how we can limit the distressing symptoms of depression and mental illness cases such as PTSD and traumatic brain injury. This connection has been supported by David Hammond in his book, British Army in the Interwar Years, cited by further literature from MJ Grant in his source, Music and Punishment in the British Army in the 18th and 19th centuries, and from Howard Bronson's text, Music in the Army. An honourable mention includes Henry Farmer with his text, the martial music of the Georges. More examples can be included in this presentation. However, I think it is appropriate to allow the literature review to fully explain the history of music in the army with correlation to musicking and therapeutic practice. So, to summarize, what is musicking? Musicking is the art of participating in musical activity, whether you are a listener or a performer who divulges meaning from what is played to your own personal message in emotional or political context. How does it connect to the army? Well, this has always been connected to the army as previous examples have explained. They have unconsciously been a part of musicking practice in hu communicating drills and orders while offering emotional, su emotional support to soldiers in reducing stress and anxiety. What's the relevance? In my dissertation, I aim to analyse music as a supportive context in the British Army to support veterans and military personnel by understanding the connection between musicking and therapeutic practice. So what do I hope to achieve? I hope to achieve in my findings the effect that musicking has on British Army veterans and personnel to see if there is a connection or, a, or even a method in reducing stress, anxiety, depression or other serious mental illness. That concludes this presentation. I hope this has given you a better knowledge of the definition of musicking and its connection to the British Army. I want to thank Dr Forbes for being my supervisor throughout this project and for supporting my studies and providing sources and knowledge to help me in my journey. Thanks again for listening and good night.